So then it comes to the point that, all right, exactly. we've got, we've got a, um, we know how to create a great experience through our answers and our, and our content. We know how to continue to create a bunch of that content and generate viewers and users and human beings coming to the site, not just traffic. Yep. Uh, and then, and then we go, cool. Um, we're on ad thrive. Um, let's get on ad thrive. What's the, what's the next step with the RPM? A lot of people like, how do I get from like a $20, $30 RPM or more? I mean, $30 is still mm -hmm. good, still decent. People might be at 15, $15 RPM. What is, I mean, you've, I just want to mm -hmm. mention just so people know that, you know, uh, through ad thrive, there's a, I think it's made with Luau or Lua who increased mm -hmm. their RPM by 350, 350%, 351%. So you guys can definitely help people increase their RPMs. What a, like, yep, yep. what time frame was that just for people to get some context, because people might think, okay, like that was done in like three days time or something like that. Maybe not realistic. Uh, what time frame yep. was that? Well, what are some of the things that people can do just like in this case study where um, we can yep. increase those? So, so I think there's made with Lau, um, which is a, so they're a great story. They have a big YouTube channel and their website was like a little secondary. I don't, I don't know them personally. No so wonder they've got the, the story a little bit. No, I was just going to say, sorry to interject. No wonder they've got a great audience because they've got the highly engaged yep. and trust through YouTube, which builds great yep. level of trust. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So if I remember correctly, their site was running AdSense before us because they hadn't thought about how to monetize their website. Yeah. And yeah. so when they moved to us, you know, a combination of way better ad layout and structure of pages, way more, you know, advanced types of ad units accessible. And then just all the things we do on the back end with our sales team and with our ad code and other stuff to just optimize. You know, it's on our website, the full case study to your point. But I would imagine within a matter of a couple of weeks, they went, they grew by 350%. So I think that that's, that's a, a great, and we get a lot of those stories from people coming from networks like AdSense. Um, where there's just a ton of room to grow. Mm. Um, so I think those are, those are great stories. I think for publishers who are already working with us or already working with like, you know, a higher tier ad network, there's still a lot of room for growth, um, you know, as a general point, but, but definitely when you come to our platform where there's so many things that we can tweak and optimize. And, and you know, some of those things we can do at a macro site-wide level for a publisher and we have a team that spends their time focused on that but then also there's a lot of things that as a publisher you can think about to do i think one of the most powerful tools we have is rpm by page so you can start seeing what are my pages and what are my experiences that are driving the highest rpms and start trying to unpack like what's happening there like what what's driving that like are users spending more time and that's driving rpm are they you know scrolling further down the page and that's driving what it is like what like and, and what it is about what is it about that content that's working best? And then what we've had a lot of publishers do over time, and, you know, we happily do this in concert with those who, who want to lean in here, look at those best earning pages and figure out what can we learn? And then how can we sort of apply those learnings elsewhere through through the content, either through more things we can do on the ad side or different kinds of content or different layouts or different approaches that, that each publisher can do to really optimize. And that's what, because I think for most publishers that have a decent pool of content, I don't know the number, but I would imagine that like, if, you're, if your site-wide RPM is $25, you've got a bunch of 40s and 50s and a bunch of 10s and 12s. And you know, the question clearly is how do I get rid of more of the 10s and 12s and get more of the 40s and 50s? Yeah. And that's a big focus of how you can really optimize, optimize your site. It comes back to what I teach and what people come to me for help with in one-to-one -one coaching is like, how do they work out what's working on the, in their business so they can do more of that and less of the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess with this one from the outside looking in, uh, it's more about those, those pieces of content that are getting the forties and fifties RPM, breaking that down, like you said, the layout, but would also be, all right, the topic is like, you know, uh, I've got a client that's, um, in the dog space is it, is it these types of dogs this breed of dogs that is and they're um they're actually moving to ad thrive um we didn't see the conversations with it is it that type of dog that topic that's bringing in the traffic because people that ha own that type of dog their intent and the love for that dog is and this is a perception could be more than say the love for a dog for other breed or the type of people that own those types of dogs um, and they are willing to spend more money on this type of dog because of that. Would they, would that be a thing that you look at and like, oh, maybe it is the topic and maybe it's the intent and maybe it's how much dollars that that, that particular, um, user coming to the site has 
Are they, they things that you look uh, at too? Yeah, hmm. yeah I, th- I think all of that is, is exactly right. Um, it's definitely on the list. I th- there's also sometimes like strange correlations that are hard to show and prove sometimes. <laughs> like yeah. owners of that kind of dog could be more affluent than the average hmm. person and therefore buyers who are interested in people earning over $100,000 a year or some you know demographic group are more yeah. likely to target target that side. So, so there are sometimes things that are harder to do. There's also on the on the ad buyer side, there's more and more, you know, machine learning going into these buying systems. Like it's rarer for somebody to be like, I'm trying to reach owners of Pomeranians and therefore I'm going to buy on these sites that have owners of Pomeranians content and whatever. Mm. Um, that happens. Um, I, although even when that happens, it's more and more automated these days, but but more often than not, it is you, um, buyers taking in lots of signals and then testing campaigns, testing hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of ad campaigns against those mm. and finding like, oh, wow, if you look at people on this dog site between the hours of three and five who come from the Pacific time zone in the US who, you know, are on their third page view, like they buy luxury SUVs like you wouldn't imagine. <laughs> and like, yeah. and then like all the luxury SUV campaigns will run there. And like, like none of us, you know, no humans could have figured that out. The mm. systems will figure that out and we'll find mm-hmm. like, this is a good place for me to advertise. 